chasing down the steely tracks of the night like the swift Shinkan Sins that are always on time. It's DIA, or Dudes in Asia. What up, peoples? As always, this is David Hader. And this is David Wynn, a.k.a. Nugnon the Barbarian. It's Tuesday, January 8th. Since our last show was pre-recorded, this is our first show of 2019. Happy New Year. We're looking forward to rocking it with you this year, and I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, man, it's nice to be back. It's been a while since we did this, so yeah, time to get this back. Good way to start 2019, man. How you doing, bro? You know, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Came back from vacation, you know, spent approximately 10 days in the USA. Nice. It was nice, man. I had a good time. Did you put on the five pounds that you expected? Yeah, I weighed myself this morning. (laughs) Um, So, a little bit of math for you. Before I left... I believe I was around 108 kilos, you know. And when I came back, it's about 111 and a half. That's about five. That's over five pounds. So I guess you hit about your goal. six, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, I did it, man. What puts you there, bro? What did you eat? <laughs> All type of shit, man. Um, Wait, what's, okay, I, I what's the first Denny's. thing you got when you got back? Yeah, first thing. First I thing. went to went to Denny's, Denny's, but when we got to LAX, it was like around like eleven thirty, like midnight ish. Mm. Yeah, so I went to Denny's and I got the uh, chicken fried steak skillet. Mm, nice. Yeah, so it's like chicken fried steak with like fried eggs, like and then a gang of potatoes. Man, mm. it did the trick. It did sound like it did the trick. Yeah, oh, how yeah. did that whole airline thing turn out, man? Oh, man, have I got stories for you. Yes, please share. <laughs> so, please share. I'm really curious well, about that. Yeah, it was pretty interesting, right? Because, like, I think I told you, uh, if you guys haven't listened to the previous episodes, uh, shame on you. Uh, <laughs> but that's okay. No, no, no. I'll fill you in. So, my uh, brother's father-in-law was a mechanic for Delta, like, for many years. So, they get something, like, called a buddy pass. And so, basically, what that means is... Like you, your family, your friends can fly on Delta for only the price of like the taxes, right? It's like a non-revenue ticket. And so uh, we were on standby for first class. And, you know, um, so basically like his sister-in-law, you know, like the father's daughter, like helped arrange everything. And the way she had it first is that we're going to go from Nagoya to Hawaii, right? And then Hawaii to LAX. But it's like right after Christmas, like right before New Year's, and everybody and their mama wants to go to Hawaii, you know? Mm. And so we show up that night to the airport. It's like a Thursday night. And we're like, hey, we have this buddy pass. I'm like, oh. I'm like, you think we can get on this flight? I'm like, it's looking pretty full. I'm going to tell you to come back in an hour and a half. And we we're there like three hours like before the flight was supposed to leave, right? Mm-hmm. And we're like, okay, that's not a good sign. So we're like, let's go over here and eat and get like a beer too. We'll go back and see what they say. And we came back like, yeah, we're totally full. So you're not getting on this flight. And we're like, fuck. So uh, I was like, what should I do? Can you help me? They're like, uh, I'm like, is there a number I can call? They're like, uh, I'm like, I have to contact the person that made the thing. They're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and so, like, I just get on my phone, booking.com. I'm like, what's around here? I got to give a shout-out to the Four Points by Sheraton, Nagoya uh, Airport Hotel. Man, the place is swanky, man. It's pretty nice. Nice. Probably put some pictures up on the blog. (laughs) But, yeah, so we stayed there, you know, spent the night. And then I was looking up flights the next day, and they didn't have one to Hawaii the next day, which was like, or actually, we're leaving on the Friday, and then we're going to have to leave on the Saturday. But then on the Saturday, they had a flight that went through Detroit, right? So we, we got booked for that one. But then what happened is we woke up that morning. And, like, the night before, I was walking around and noticed my shoe was making a weird sound. It was like, mmm, mmm, like my right foot whenever I'd walk. I'm like, what is that? And I look, and it's, like, coming apart. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Converse All-Star, man. Lasted me one year. I guess I walk too much or I'm just too powerful in my feet. <laughs> But so now I've got one busted shoe, like missed a flight and I got another flight coming up like 6 p.m. that night. So like we go to the mall that's close to the airport. Nice mall. 
and I'm just on a quest to find size 12 shoes in Japan and like no one has them you know mm. <laughs> so <laughs> we go by one store do you have size 12 no go to another store do you have size 12 we have this one like ugly ass green shoe I'm like yeah, I'm gonna pass on that <laughs> like do you have size 12 no do you have size 12 no and then I went to the Skechers and I'm like do you have size 12 shoes like yeah we got a bunch of them like what color do you want it's like something dark like how about this black one I'm like eh. do you have something that's like gray he's like I'll be back he's like how about this one I'm like sure I'll take him like how much he's like 75 buck I'm like fuck it I just want shoes you know yeah. and so then we go back to get on the flight and then like it's very chill man there aren't that many people there and then we're like hey can we get on this one and they're like yeah your chances look pretty good and I was like okay and then so like what happens is at the gate like I'm not at the gate like at the check in counter they check your bags and they put a little thing on it that says like standby luggage you know mm-hmm. and then after that they give you like you know how normally you get like a boarding pass mm-hmm. this one says like seat request so you're not assigned a seat right away you have to go to the gate and then once it's time to like board they assign the seat to you mm. yeah so then we're like sitting there waiting they're like calling the names like yeah blah 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 David Hader please come to the gate blah 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 I'm like sweet go up there and like here you go this is your boarding pass I was like holy shit it was like first class dude nice. I was like damn I was like so uh, premium does that mean like I, I line up over here or do I go to the premium line They're like oh yes go to the premium line you see you know like when they call like boarding mm-hmm. it's like first class because it's like yes <laughs> how long is that flight yeah. from Japan to Detroit about like 12 hours I want to say okay that, not too far. bad not too bad yeah for first class nice, it don't man. matter though <laughs> Oh, man, it was quite nice, dude. It's like you go on, and then, like, you sit down. And they're like, would you like champagne? I'm like, hey, yes, I would. <laughs> it's kind of like that business class that we had before by by luck. Yeah. That's a story for another time. Yep. But anyway, man, like, first class, they fucking hook it up, dude. Like, they come by, like, would you like something to drink? And I was looking at the drink menu. I'm like, what's the most expensive thing? I'm like, Macallan 12 here, please. <laughs> Have me a nice scotch. And then, like when you get a meal dude it's like an appetizer like plate you know mm-hmm. like it's got like five different courses i'll put some pictures of those up later too and i had like steak and then like for dessert like a cheese plate with like dessert wine oh, it was bomb dude god damn yeah and then like your screen is like a 15 inch like touch screen like mm. to watch movies and shit and, like, the headphones are actually, like, legit headphones, not, like, earbuds, not, like, plastic, like, over-the-ear, like, 99-cent store bullshit, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so that was quite nice. And then the, the seat actually, like, lays flat, you know? Mm, dude, that's, yeah, that's dope, man. Yeah, yeah. So I, I enjoyed it. It was quite good. <laughs> but then, so we got to Detroit, and then it was time to catch the connecting flight to LAX. And we go to the gate. And we go to the guy, we're like, hey, we're on this buddy pass. What do you do? He's like, just chill out. And if there's room, I'll call you. I was like, okay. And like, it was like super packed, man. Like everybody wants to travel. Mm. And the thing that we didn't know before we took this is that like, there's uh, priorities for like who is flying. So like highest priority would be like current Delta employees. And then like next priority is like retired Delta employees. And then, like, the next priority would be, like, family members. And then the last priority is just, like, friends. So, like, everyone who wanted to fly standby was, like, higher than us, pretty much, you know? (laughs) Yeah. And so we were waiting for, like, the last, like, seats. And it's like, we got one seat. And they're like, are you guys willing to split up? And I was, like, telling my girlfriend, I'm like, you should just go. That way one of us will be there. And, like, you know, blah, 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 blah. She's like, I'm not going to split up. I'm like, we're not splitting up. And then this other guy's like, here's your ticket. And he's like, sweet. (laughs) So we ended up not catching the flight that we wanted. Mm. And there's, like, one more flight in, like, probably, like, two or three hours. And so we go to that gate. And then they're like, oh, it's not this gate. It's this other one. And I'm like, well, fuck it. Let's go over there. And then we go back over there. And they start, like, you know, I always want to go up and be like, hey, we're here. Like, do we have to do anything? They're like, if you're waiting for a seat assignment, don't come up to the gate. We're doing the seat assignments right now. And if there's seats available, we'll call you. We're like, cool. And so there's like a little thing. And you can see when they call people and they get seats. And they call everybody and everybody's boarded the plane. 
and they don't call us right mm. and we go up there like hey uh you didn't call our names like what's up are we getting on this flight and they're like oh yeah you guys got the last two seats i'm like you said you're gonna call me motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> no but then they're like okay enjoy it but then that one wasn't first class yeah. And that was like one of the worst flights of my life. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> so it went from like a super bomb flight to like a really shitty one. Oh yeah, man! It was like the from the flight from hell, dude. So I go to my seat, and there's like you know I, I don't discriminate on large people, but there's a large woman sitting next to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> like she's in the middle seat, and I got the aisle. Mm, at least you got. So the, I got. Yeah, at least you got the yeah. aisle, right? Yeah. So so I've got like you know like seventy five like sixty percent of a seat. And, um, there's like this crazy lady in front of me who's like, she's putting like her feet up, like on the other chair, like across the aisle and shit. Like she's just doing wild shit, you know? And then behind me, it's one of those people that don't know how to touch the screen. They're like, hit the shit out of it. You know what I mean? (laughs) And so it's like, I'm kind of spilling out into the aisle because of the large lady next to me. And then the person behind me is like hitting the shit out of the screen. And then like about an hour and a half into the flight like the lady in front of me just decides she wants to recline you know and like you know i'm a big dude like and so my knees just go into the seat in front of me anyway and like usually i can bring my legs out to the side but because of that large lady next to me i could not so it's just like leg to leg like her chairs just in my knee and i'm just getting hit from behind and like getting a hit from the side dude it was horrible man that was fucked dude and like i think i went to sleep for probably like 10 minutes and then the lady in front of me just decided to recline more like into my knee and i remember i woke up and i like i just said like what the fuck like you know and i was looking into the back of her head and it looked like a small like asian child's face but it was actually the back of her head like i was just in a disoriented like state of mind you know what i mean (laughs) oh yeah it was trippy dude oh yeah damn but yeah man we made it back and and things were cool you know what i mean um yeah the vacation itself was pretty cool i don't know man if i talk dude it'll it'll go forever you know yeah but at least you got to meet your niece that's one of the key highlights right yeah yeah i met the niece but then like i got sick though too mm. you know like christmas day like merry christmas <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i met the niece that was cool like usually before i'd travel around a lot more and i'd do like more shit but this time I just spent a lot more time with like family and stuff you know just cool nice and then what was crazy is i got sick and then we we're gonna go to mexico anyway and they're like yeah you should just see the doctor down there and get some medicine i was like fuck it why not and, like, to see the doctor and get meds was, like, 15 bucks, dude. Mm-hmm. Super cheap. Yeah. And then on the flight back, right? Like, because we are like, man, we don't want to have to spend the night, like, in Detroit or, like, Hawaii. Like, you know what I mean? And plus, we had to get back to work. Mm-hmm. So, we just changed it to a direct flight from LAX to Tokyo. And then the first day we went, like, we did not get onto a flight, you mm-hmm. know? And, like... It was pretty crazy. That was like the first time I've gone to an airport and not gone on a flight. So I'm like, how do I get out of here? What do I do? Like, you know, mm-hmm. but, um, yeah. And you know what? Usually like a lot of the people in Delta are quite nice, but the lady that day was just kind of like a bitch, dude. I don't know why. Maybe she just didn't like me or what. Mm. But I went up and I was just like, Hey, we're on this buddy pass. What are you going to do? And she's like, she just looked at me and looked down. She's like, if there's space, I'll call you. I was just like, fuck. I was like, I didn't shit in your cereal this morning. What do you give me attitude for? You know? <laughs> And then these other guys come and think they work at Delta. He's like, oh, hey, how you guys doing? Oh, you're going to Japan? That's so cool. I'm like, oh, you got smiles for them and nothing for me, huh? It's cold in this bitch. I see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, we did not get on that flight. And then, like, we rebooked it for the next day. And everybody's like, why are you using these passes now? You shouldn't be doing this. Nobody should be doing this. Like, tomorrow looks bad, but you can try. And like, fuck it, we're going to try. And then we went. And then there was, like, five open seats, you know? And so, like, we got two, and, like, another lady got one, and, like, back to first class, dude. Nice. Okay. Yep. So it was cool, man. It was cool. I enjoyed it. Two first class flights and one ride from hell. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, is, like, maybe the tickets were about, like, $600, you know? Mm. Round trip. 
and like we could have gotten something like air china you know through beijing like guaranteed about the same price mm. you know so we weren't really saving any money but it's like you we did get first class but it's like we had to leave a few days later we had to come back a few days earlier you know what i mean mm-hmm. so it was definitely like a cool experience and like that was something on my bucket list to try a first class flight mm-hmm. but probably not something i would do again <laughs> you know depending on the time schedule yeah. and like how much time i had off you know yeah and like uh i heard like on new year's day like on cathay pacific is like one of the highest rated airlines they had yeah. some kind of fuck up that like first really? first class tickets it was like for it was from like from vietnam round trip to us and like vancouver mm-hmm. and toronto was like yeah. 95% off holy shit so all the tickets dude. were like $10,000 normally were like 600 700 wow damn but well, they see, honored those tickets the though they honored too. those tickets though that's pretty nice, nice. of them yeah well like i looked at how much these flights would have cost normally and it probably would have been like five or six thousand dollars round trip mm-hmm. first class yeah. you know but still like so yeah, yeah got my come up and yeah. but you know i i felt like you know i didn't want to be like one of those guys like i'm new here how does this shit work like you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's like you're that like we just happen there. to get on there yeah <laughs> they're just surrounded by all these rich bastards that actually paid for their flight mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah it was pretty cool, man. I had a good time. Nice. Nice. Sounds like you had a little yeah, adventure yeah. there, man. Yeah, man. But yeah, there's there's a lot of other shit that happened on vacation. I'll tell you another time, though, dude. <laughs> Sounds good, dude. Yeah, we wanted to uh, talk about something that's kind of current right now. So we're going to be talking about fitness. And how to keep your old ass in shape. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. So I, I know you've been working out a lot lately, man, but what's been your uh, general experience with fitness, man? Um, general experience. Well, so for current update of me, dude, so since the start of December, I've only missed like one workout day. Nice. Yeah. So it's been pretty You nice. working out every day, dude? Every fucking day at yeah, anywhere seven days between a week, four, huh? four, thirty. Yeah. Just my 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 off day is just yoga and like swimming. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, so it's like just keep it in motion. Like I don't I'm not trying to hit the weights every day or something, but at least like at least yoga, that's not exactly brutal or by any means, you know? I mean it's you're mm-hmm. sweating your ass off and stuff, but it's just good for the body to you know, maintain flexibility and whatnot. So yeah. For sure, man. So yeah, that's just been my my thing lately. It's just work out, work, and then fam. Cool, cool. Yeah, right so, on, man. Yeah, experience with fitness. Well, I'm a f- well, I'm uh never been into sports. I mean, like I like playing basketball. I used to do bodyboarding, but I was never like into any like team sports or sports in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, had moments here and there. I keep fluctuating my weight. Like, in my prime, I would be, like, running the stairs in Long Beach and then, like, doing bodyboarding in the morning and basketball in the evening. But that was, like, my prime. And then, mm, yeah, like, yeah. you know, moments of complete, complete laziness, gain on some weight, and then, you know, smell the coffee and then do something else again. So, this is probably mm-hmm. the most consistent I've been working out, though. For sure, dude. Yeah. For sure. So, yeah, I'm just, like... I'm that on again, off again type of person, but hopefully I don't, I don't want this one to mean, I just want to maintain this to be my lifestyle and not just like have a goal of like hit 180 and then just kind of call it quits. Like I just want to mm-hmm. just make exercise a part of my, you know, daily life. So that's where I'm at right now, man. How's about you? Yeah, for me, dude, I, I definitely feel like I'm kind of like that on again, off again type as well. Mm. Like, you know, sometimes things get busy and other things take a back seat, mm-hmm. you know, but I feel like I've always kind of like exercise, just moving, even since I was a kid. Mm. Like, I remember like in elementary school, like junior high school, I was like the chubby kid that had wheels, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like I'd put out in, in PE, I wasn't like one of those lazy bastards, you know, mm-hmm. and then... I feel like the first time I really started training hard is when I joined the wrestling team in uh, high school, you know, Mm -hmm. like we do a lot of stair running, like jump rope, like carrying people across fields, you know, and it's like you kind of learn how to push your body, you know, Mm -hmm. and then uh, later on, like, you know, I probably didn't work out for a long time. It took like a long break 
And I started getting back into shape, like cycling, swimming, weightlifting, you know, doing martial arts, taking dance classes, doing a lot of shit, you know? Yeah, I remember that stretch, bro. You was on it. You was on it, man. Well, I remember I did some math, dude, and, like, I was basically, like, doing... I was training, like, 20 hours a week, like, plus, you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. It's like a part-time job, you know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, man, I mean, it it was cool, you know? I I feel like that's what I do at City College. I take all the classes I need, and then I would just sign up for other shit, just use it like a gym, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so have you joined, like, a gym out there in Vietnam, dude? Uh, Like, how was it? uh, Let's see. So I've never personally joined a gym. I've had, like, free memberships because, like, VC hooked it up. Um, Fun today because, like, uh, VC had just moved into, like, District 2, and Mm -hmm. his place has, like, a pretty sick gym. And we're trying to do this whole, like, membership stuff that – so the plan they have is, like, 100 bucks a month, which is ridiculous. Yeah, but, for like, Vietnam, if you right? have, yeah, for sure. But if you um, pay for like a year, it's like five hundred or something like that. Hmm. And then if you pay for like two years, is equals out to like fifty bucks a month. Plus, you could bring someone every time. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that, but it's like, but it's still like you know, for Vietnam standards, it's you know, it's pretty shocking that it's like, still like fifty dollars a month for a gym. So that kind of yeah, means right? that's a very just like a high class kind of well i mean this type of gym has yeah. like the ufc set up and they got like it got a sick gym you know if you go to like a local local spot that like the the locals are going to they'll probably cost mm-hmm. you like seven bucks a month or so or maybe less nice but if you're talking about like yeah. you know like a nice professional clean like u.s standards then it's definitely at least like 50 bucks or so wow crazy man yeah yeah, so it's it's, yeah. A, it's a lot of like you know sales and so if you you know buy this they'll cut you a deal you buy this package you get you know that type of stuff so you know it's probably mm-hmm. no different from back home for sure how's about Japan man yeah like I I've joined a, a couple of gyms out here and the thing that got me is there's always like a registration fee it could be about fifty to like seventy bucks none of that here. Yeah, and then you'll have to fill out, like, some paper forms, you know. Um, If, like, for most of the gyms that I've seen in my area, like, it might be different, like, in Nagoya, like, Tokyo. Mm -hmm. I've seen, like, smaller gyms out there that look more bare bones. Mm -hmm. But, like, out here, like, if you want to go any time, it costs about $100 a month. Mm -hmm. And if they have, like, a night pass, you can go, like... At one gym, it's like between five and ten. Another gym, it's like between seven and like midnight, and that's like fifty dollars a month. You know, mm. yeah. And then the thing though too is like a lot of the gyms out here they have like a no tattoo policy. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like if you have tattoos, you can't join. And I think like it costs a lot because they have a lot of extra shit that like they don't really have back home. Like. They have kind of like a hot spring, you know, like onsen, like bathhouse type nice. things. Yeah, they also have like massage chairs and stuff, you know. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, but the gym itself to me is kind of whack, you know. Like there's not a lot of free weights. Um, there's like a lot of machines and like mostly just like treadmills and like ellipticals, you know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it, have you noticed like... I know you talked about it a little bit, but is there like a big difference in the gyms out there compared to like something in America? No, actually, it's just, just like less. That's that's all I can really mm, say. Yeah. It's just like it's, but it's like the same equipment, same like same vibe almost. Um, okay. But it's just like you know, it's just a little smaller because there's not like as, there's not, you know, as many people committed to their health, like fitness compared to back home, mm-hmm. that type of thing. But it's still like yeah. almost the same shit. A lot of free weights. I mean, yeah, it's a good amount of stuff that you need. Yeah. Well, have you noticed, like, what do the other people do when they go to the gym? Like, are they seriously, like, working out, or are they just kind of, like, fucking around? I don't I mean, who isn't on their phone? Like, do I, like the gym, like, I have in my complex, there's this yeah. guy who always is, like, is at, the, like, the, the bench press machine for, like, an hour. Like, hit, like, eight reps, <laughs> five minutes on his phone, yeah. another eight reps another five minutes on his phone you know i was like god oh damn it i'm like oh just brutal dude it's brutal <laughs> um i like 
I, it's probably because it's more today's world because I haven't been to the gym since like the whole selfie era. But uh, you yeah. definitely notice that a shit ton more with females. Mm, it's just gonna whip out their see. like they're doing a couple reps, they're doing a couple stretches, and they gotta take a couple pictures, and it's almost like uh-huh. fifteen minutes and it's done. It's like you call that a workout, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I remember hearing the on the radio. Living. Yeah. What's up? Or no, I think I was watching Netflix. They're talking about like social media, and it's like, yeah, I was chilling in this hotel, and like this lady came out in her bikini, and like just sat down next to the pool, and like pulled out her pic- her phone, and took a picture, and then just bounced. <laughs> Like, yep. you know, it's like they go take the selfie and like, that's what they wanted, you know, yep. throw it up to Instagram. Mm-hmm. Like, this is my life. I chill yeah. here all day. It's like, <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's, that's like the, I mean, there are a couple, yeah, there's a couple serious people, but I mean, like, it's like any gym, right? There's like, there's always a couple fatties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> always a couple of people just like, just yoked. And then the people are yep. just, you know trying to just do their things so i don't know it doesn't feel too different okay for yeah. sure man yeah well uh i know like so you're going to the gym now right mm-hmm. like uh i think before you used to exercise without really going to the gym yeah correct yeah yeah what kind of stuff would you do or like what would you recommend to somebody who's staying in vietnam wants to get in shape don't really want to pay for a gym Ooh, depends uh, so you know, like I live in an apartment complex, so I have a gym, but even I don't hit the gym every day. I do yeah. swimming, but you know, that mm-hmm. you might have to pay for that. But well, lately, I've been doing yeah. a lot of stair work as well. Uh-huh. Like uh, 25 floors up, elevator down, 25 floors up, wow. elevator down. Like just yesterday. Not bad. Man. Yeah, yesterday I did 106 floors, dude. Fuck. That's crazy, man. I was just walking it, but like double steps. And that shit's still yeah. like. But it handles, least, dude. Yeah, but like, you're not sore at all. But it's like mm-hmm. you're huffing and puffing a lot, you know. I mean, like just <laughs> yeah, like any yeah. other place, just go run, um, do your push-ups, do your burpees. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of those, like you know those, you know at the park they always have those machines, like those weird ass ellipticals and things like that. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know what are they called. You know what I'm talking about, the right? Ellipticals, like they you know at the park they always a- have like those like. Those, like, oh metal. yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you can yeah, find it is that like a, an elliptical. Yeah, it's like kind of like an elliptical, right? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have a lot of those out here, surprisingly now. So I mean, you hit those things, do your your dips, your pull ups, things like that. Yeah. Um, For sure. But I mean, man. like at home, dude, just do what you got to do. I mean, it's like you don't need a gym to get in shape for sure. You know. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I know for me, like, because my apartment is, like, tiny, so things like the DDP yoga, Mm -hmm. like, that works well. I've done, like, T25, but you can't, like, jump at all, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Piss off my neighbor. (laughs) And then, uh, yeah, like, running's pretty good. Like, running stairs is good, too. And Mm -hmm. then in Japan, like, any, like, shrine is usually, like, a lot of shrines are up on top of hills. Nice. So if you can find a shrine, that's a good place to kind of run out run around and then what i do is i would go uh work out at the park you know like i'd go to the swings and do some pull-ups like go to the slide and do some dips you know go to like these tiny bars and do like they call it like australian pull-ups you know kind of like a row mm. yeah those are pretty good yeah i don't think i know that one uh it's like when you have a really low bar mm-hmm. and then you kind of hang underneath it so like your feet are down in front of you and you're almost like parallel to the ground. You're like flat. And then you pull yourself up oh, to the oh, bar. Like you pull it. your chest to the bar. Got yeah. It, got it, got Australian it. pull-ups. Okay. I that's believe. what they're called. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know about the, like, yeah. what's that, that move where you kind of like, almost like, so you're like, like you're hanging, sorry, a little far from the mic. You're kind of hanging yeah. like forward onto the bar and you're kind of like doing this weird kind of, um, like a tricep exercise, like ah, I don't even know how to describe. Oh, it. I know what you're talking about. It's like a Roman. It's kind of like, like a. I forgot what the name of that was. I don't know what they call that either. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I could have. You know what I'm talking it. about, though, right? Kind of. Yeah, it's like you kind of hang and then you push yourself up, and it works the tricep kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah. I was like, that's I don't know, that's dude. actually really hard. But probably because I have weak arms, so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, one day at a time, man. One day at a time. Yeah, buddy. But yeah, dude. I don't know, we're so, hitting that half hour mark again, dude. Damn. <laughs> that was fast. Yeah. You got any final thoughts, dude, on fitness? Anything you want to say? Oh, man. I just, uh, 
talking with like uh, if for people who like really want to get in shape, man, it's like be consistent as fuck, but also mm-hmm. like don't um, just kind of make it enter like you know make it different. Don't just keep doing the weights. Don't keep doing the gym. Like switch it up. Do swimming. Mm-hmm. Go out for a run. You know, do some boxing. Do something, but just switch it up. Don't just do the same thing over and over for sure. And that'll just help you have a good time. You know. That's yeah, what and I think with anything, man, like people get into a comfort zone. Yeah, no, you got to get like, no, there. You, that's perfect, yeah. dude. Perfect. They're oh. like, I don't want to do that because it's hard. I'm like, the shit that's hard is worth doing. Yeah, exactly. Like you, like you should be comfortable for a little bit, but they, like at, at least like twice or three times a week, you gotta just go a little bit further than what you kind of set yourself out to do. You know, because yep, yep. like lately, it's just like if I told myself I'm gonna do like 15 minutes on the elliptical, I usually end up doing like. 30 you know nice. it's just like fuck it dude like I could, I could go a little bit more i could go a little bit more you know and then one time i told myself i was doing 10 and i ended up doing 50 you know it's like <laughs> oh shit nice man yeah like oh, I mean, just, the whole david goggins thing is just great dude like if you want to grow just put yourself in uncomfortable positions and then you'll just yep. you'll amaze yourself and that could just really um build the confidence in other things not just exercising but just in life if you're uncomfortable um you can, and you know when the shit goes your way that you know the shit's out of your control and you're uncomfortable like you at least know that like, you can find a way to do it you know most deaf dude yep okay right on man yo yeah well, that does it for another fresh fresh episode of dudes in asia fitness is a big part of a healthy lifestyle so get your goals together keep working stay awesome you know the more you do something the easier it gets yep and then you gotta find another challenge and make it hard all over again so anyways yes thanks for tuning in happy 2019 everyone this is Nugnon the Barbarian signing out be sure to check out our blog at dudesinasia.blogspot.com or hit us up on Facebook at facebook.com slash dudesinasia yeah if you want to follow me on Twitter search for at David Hader that's at D-A-V-I-D H-8 Peace out. Peace out, y'all.